So I've been doing a lot of back and forth between all of these pieces of legislation. So I found in the Municipal Act, there is a section called Spheres of Jurisdiction, and it's section 11. Now, this is, this is a bit confusing, but anyways, section 11, subsection 2, which is bylaws, part 4 of subsection 2 states, don't be laughing. <laughs> I don't know how you remember all this stuff. <laughs> Anyways, it states that the municipalities may make bylaws to acquire assets to exercise their authority under the Municipal Act or any other act. Now, most people think an asset might be a car or a truck or something along those lines. An asset also includes real property. So this is what they are to use. They are to acquire assets or property to exercise their authority under the Municipal Act or any other act. So that tells me that the only thing they can exercise their authority over are things that belong to the municipality. So then when you go down, I think it's to uh, subsection 6 of that again, it refers to economic development. Well, down farther in section 11 of the Municipal Act, there is this table. And in that table, there are the spheres of jurisdiction, whether it's upper or lower, or if it's not restricted, both of them can do it. Well, when you get down to economic development, it says it may make acquisitions of property for economic development so that once the property is developed, it can be zoned for commercial, industrial, or institutional use. So that tells me that they must own the property before they can zone it under Section 34 of the Planning Act. So in other words, the Midland Free Press from 2000 in regards to Roundtree Beach Association, when they said, you can't plan for it if you don't own it, is absolutely correct. All of these pieces of legislation tell us is they may enter into agreements with us, they may expropriate, they may purchase, or they may lease, which is an agreement. But it does not give them the authority over our own private property. Because the municipalities are corporations. Now some people have argued with me about Section 2 of the Municipal Act that states that they are to be accountable and transparent governments. Then it goes on to state though, and this is the fun part, <clears throat> it states that the province has granted them good government status. The province cannot grant the municipalities good government status because the province does not have good government status. And I would think that the Good Government Act of 2005-2006 is actually ultra vires or beyond the constitutional jurisdiction of the province because under the British North America Act, Section 91, it is only the federal government that has peace, order, and good government. So the province doesn't have that authority. So for it tried to expand its authority by giving the municipality authority that even the province doesn't have is completely beyond its ability. But when you're reading through the Municipal Act and you're reading through the Conservation Authority Act, the Niagara Escarpment Act, and so on and so forth, 
There are always the statements in it. They must enter into agreements, they must purchase, or they must expropriate. And none of that is happening because no one is reading the legislation. The MPPs, sorry Jack, they haven't got time to read these documents. The Municipal Act is 387 pages. That's for the one Municipal Act. But then you have the Municipal Franchise Act. You have the Municipal Amendment Act. You have the Municipal Elections Act. It's not one act. And then you have all of these other regulations. So there is no way that Jack McLaren as an MPP can actually sit down and read a whole piece of legislation. They used to have to. So then when you're looking at our municipal councillors, they have the Municipal <coughs> Act, they have the Planning Act. They have 80 other pieces of legislation to know and understand, minimum. The building code in the province of Ontario is 1,853 pages. That's because of regulations that have been added to the building code. I've read it. In the building code, I have a question for everyone in this room. Why would an individual person on private property <clears throat> apply for a permit to put a pool in their backyard when the definition of an outdoor pool in the building code is a public pool that is not indoors. So why are you applying to put a pool, uh, applying for a permit to put a pool in your backyard? Because you were told to. Because no one reads the legislation. 